here's the, the example, the first example for today. Uh, let's say that we have a function or the integral, and this is the same integral we had last time, the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. Now, we know exactly how to calculate this value, but in this case, the task is different. In this case, we want to find n such that uh, e sub m, the error, as we calculate the midpoint, and e sub t, the error, as we calculate the trapezoidal, uh, with the trapezoidal rule, are uh, less than 0 0.0001. Like so. So, we want to find out how many sub-intervals we need to use in order to guarantee that whatever you calculate, will, the error will be less than this number. And this is really a practical approach to approximate integration. Because what, what, we, what is up to us to decide is two things. What technique to use, and then how many sub-intervals are required. Okay, so we know that right now the midpoint will give us a better uh, approximation, but we still don't know uh, how many sub-intervals we need to use to get accuracy to that l this, this level of accuracy. Okay, so here is when we're going to use the arrow bound to discuss this. And probably going to ask me, there'll be a little surprise over there, but... We'll, we'll get there when we'll get there. So let's see. The solution goes like this. What's common to both is they need to find k. And this is something we already done last time. Uh, since f of x equals 1 over x, then f prime, if you recall, was negative 1 over x squared. And f double prime was positive 2 over x cubed. Right? So we've seen this last time. So now we follow, and we said since, uh, remember that x is bounded by 1 and 2. x is a value between 1 and 2, right? So what does this tell you? Uh, it tells you that, um, so let's see, since, I should have written, since x is a value between 1 and 2, then um, 1 f double prime, which is 1 or 2 over x cubed, the biggest value of 2 over x cubed will be when x equals 1, right? So, it will be less than or equal to 2 over 1 cube, which is simply 2. And this will give us the value of k. So we're going to say so k equals 2, and now we are ready to calculate the errors. So a, let's calculate uh, e sub m, so uh, let's calculate this error, okay? So we have 0 0.001, like so, we know it's less than or equal to 2 times 2 minus 1 cube divided by 24 times n squared, okay? And this, folks, equals to, let's say, 1 over 12, and cube, and cube, and, and squared, I'm sorry. All right, here's something that you're probably going to ask me why, but I'm going to write it and see if there are questions. Therefore, n squared is greater than or equal to Instead of dividing by 0 0.0001, it's like multiplying by 10,000 over 12. And therefore, n has to be greater than, or I'll leave it greater than 29, or equal 29.
what does it tell us? If we want to calculate this particular integral with accuracy better than 0 0.0001, then I need to do at least 29 subintervals. I need to divide 1 and 2 into 29 intervals. Likewise, when I'll do the uh, trapezoidal error, I'm going to set up 0 0.0001 less than or equal to 2 times 2 minus 1 cube divided by 12 times n squared, which is 1 over 6 n squared, and therefore n squared is greater than or equal to 10,000 over 6, and therefore n by itself has to be greater than or equal 41. And you can see that for to maintain the same accuracy but using the trapezoidal rule, I need to increase the number of subintervals to at least 41. I'll take your question. There should be one question jumping right out. And let's see if you, you're going to ask me this question. Wow. Okay. No <laughs> question. What's the question we should have asked? What's the question you should have asked? I would ask, well, I expect you to ask, why, if I start with 0 0.0001 less than or equal to, why n squared is greater than or equal to? That, that's the kind of a question I anticipated, but you didn't ask, so maybe it's clear to you why. I'll explain it gladly. <laughs> that's, that's why I ask you to ask me. <laughs> Think about this, guys. Let's, let's take a very simple example, okay? Let's say X, I'm here, and X, this is, on the left side we have X, on the right side we have one half. Let's say X is less than one half. And think about what possible values are less than one half. Well, one of them will be one third, the other one fourth, one fifth, and so on. So as we increase the, the, no, the denominator, then we have values less than one half. Now let's let's take the reciprocal. What happened to one over x? If one if x is less than one half, you take the reciprocal, then one over x has to be greater than two, right? We already dis established that. One, one third is less than one half, one fourth is less than one half, so now I'll take, flip it over, head over tail, one over x, so it has to be greater than two, because we're looking at now one over x will be three or four or five. And that's why when we, when I saw for n squared, I really flip it over, because n squared was in the denominator here, so that's why this would be, this was less than or equal to, and now this would be greater than or equal to. Okay? The calculations themselves are very simple. 10,000 divided by 12 and take the square root and take the positive value. Okay?